Hello, I'm Eric Shaw. Time now for a Sunday House Call. And I'm Arthel Neville. Welcome, everyone. Joining us is Dr. David Samadhi, Chairman and Professor of Urology at Lenox Hill Hospital and Chief of Robotic Surgery. And Dr. Mark Siegel, Professor of Medicine at NYU's Langone Medical Center. He's also the author of The Inner Pulse, Unlocking the Secret Code of Sickness and Health. Good to see Doctors. you, Doc. Nice Great to, to see, see you. you. As always. Very good. Well, we're going to start with some groundbreaking research on bone repair, a new study revealing broken bones don't actually heal like doctors thought they did. So, Dr. Samadhi, we start with you to tell us more about the study. And also, who would you say is more prone to, to bone fractures? You know, my gosh, uh, for years and years and years, uh, we thought that the bone healing is a completely different process. This is a great study coming from Vanderbilt Medical Center. They have done a great job in finding out exactly what is bone healing and how does it work. And for years, we thought something called fibrin, which is involved in clotting. You know, what happens is when the bone fractures, bone is the organ which is porous, has a lot of blood vessels. When it fractures, also those vessels start to bleed. Well, guess what? Fibrin, which is almost like a scaffold, can come in and does the healing. And all the textbooks in orthopedics and in bone is talking about this. Today, based on the study coming out of Vanderbilt, we'll find out that it's actually not correct. And that's why it makes this study uh, interesting. And in fact, it uh, has nothing to do with healing. And in, in genetically modified mice, they find that if there's no fibrin, the bone actually went ahead and healed and it was fine. Why is this important? Last week, we talked about the elderly population growing and, and we talked about their heart and obesity and diabetes, one of the things as we get older, the risk of bone fracture in the elderly population goes up. These are uh, patients in the hospitals that they can fall, the number of falls are high. And so taking care of yourself today when you're young in your 30s and 40s is very critical. Exercise can build up your bone density. Taking your vitamin D and calcium and you talk to your doctor and find out how much you should be taking, healthy diet, all of that is important. And as you lose the weight today, you're banking on your future and your bone health, which is very Mark, important. Mark, when should you start doing that? I mean, uh, when, how do you take care of your bones when it's earlier? And should you take calcium pills? Well, first of all, you should start doing that day one. Now, you should be up exercising. You should have a proper diet. You should decrease stress. You should sleep properly. All of that will put you in a better position if something goes wrong, if you fall, if you break a bone, if you have a wound, if you go to surgery. Now, what's interesting here about the fibrin that David was talking about is people that are overweight and diabetics, guess what they have? A lot of fibrin. In other words, the stuff that comes in after you wound yourself or break a bone is there to stabilize the situation. If it stays around and you don't need it, it's a sign that the body isn't working ideally. So we may be able to figure out in the future, because you always ask me, Eric, when's this coming to prime time? We may be able to figure out in the future how to lower the fibrin in people that are obese, that are diabetic, that don't have good wound healing, and thereby help them. But after you get a wound or break a bone, got to do those same things again. Eat properly, sleep properly, and get up and exercise as soon as possible. But does like a calcium pills now or, or milk, should, do you recommend that for people? That depends on the person. I don't put everybody on calcium. I like vitamin D. We love vitamin D on the show, but I want to know levels. What is your calcium level? What is your vitamin D level? Before I would just say everybody should take calcium not everybody you know something you can check your blood and this is very important you can check your calcium level you can check your level of 125 vitamin d and find out whether you're deficient you or not you just get a blood test and your doctor you can ask them you can get your bone density if you're over 65 you can check your bone density see if you have enough uh, bone and that's going to last you and you know what osteoporosis is also is on the rise among men even though it's more common in, in women. And you know why? why? Because we're sitting around, we're behind computers, we're not moving, we're heavier, and also all this obesity. Imagine the weight that those knees have to carry, mm -hmm. pressure on those bones is tremendous, and you put, you, you know, by losing weight and exercise. But, David, so, Dr. But what, Samadhi just saved a lot of people today, because you know what? Men don't want to admit this. The one thing you didn't say, we're too macho to admit that we have bone density problems, that we're losing bone. And you know what happens when we lose bone? We fall, we get fractures. We end up with a hip fracture at the age of 70. So, But I have Dr. to admit, Mark, uh, uh, I'm sorry, but I, I take vitamin D3 myself. Me too. Yeah. I do too. I take vitamin D3, and I think that's the active form that absorbs calcium. So for people out there. But Dr. Mark, 
Park, you said that, uh, you know, you should start helping yourself now. Dr. Smiley just said they start testing for bone density at the age of 65. However, should we, doctors start testing for it earlier? So why wait till you're 50, 65? Well, you know, everybody will say, but I don't want the radiation. I mean, I certainly start earlier. For women, I start right around menopause time because that's when we start to see bone loss. Estrogen protects you against this bone loss. When you start to have lowering levels of estrogen, you start to have a concern with this. And then I follow it every year or two to see what the trend is before I decide whether somebody needs treatment. For men, he's, he's given a very, very big tip here today. Men need to worry about this too when they get to andropause, when we stop having testosterone to, to help our bones. And what age menopause. is that? Menopause. Menopause. Right. menopause. How do you say that? Man <laughs> menopause. Man menopause. menopause. <laughs> what, wait a minute, what age is that? When, well, do, usually, when do I expect that? Menopause. So, Another 10 years, Eric. No, I, I don't no, know. Seriously, what age? You're in like good what, shape. Yeah. No, usually, what age? Is there well, 45, I, I, 55? 50 is the magic number for okay. us. 50 is the magic number. Over 50, we start looking at testosterone levels, and 40, we're checking PSA. But that's, that's correct, because the highest peak of your bone density and, and also testosterone is around 30 to 35, and every year you will lose some of that. And you have enough bank, you have enough bone density to last you. The reason why 65 is usually we don't see osteoporosis until 55, 60. There could be cases of early osteoporosis, but that's not the case. So eat healthy exercise, lose the weight, and take exercise, supplements. Weight or, or weight training or uh, cardiovascular, which everybody, one? Everybody is different, Arthur. You should talk to your doctor and find out, do you have arthritis or not? Do you have heart issues or not? That's individualized care, but okay. weight bearing is the way to go. I am a huge fan of cardiovascular exercise as your baseline. In other words, everyone should be doing that. Everyone should be at least walking 20 to 30 minutes a day or using that elliptical or bike or running. On top of that, there's something to be said for weightlifting and body tone and increases testosterone level. And Dr. Siegel has lost 15 pounds since three years ago. As I'm inspired by you. House call. Very so good. Very good. So you and President Bush. Congratulations. Congratulations. The, uh, the house call challenge. How about that? Let's it do some push-ups. Oh.